I wanted to make a video on Substance Painter. This is going to be how to add like color, texture, substance to a mesh. And I'm going to be using this succulent that I made. It's uh, got some leaves and a stem. So for UVs, you have to have a UV in order to get into Substance Painter. So I'm going to go over really briefly how to add one. And then just for the scale, if you're wondering, I used like it's a bit taller than a sphere. And then that's like compared to the body size. So first thing you want to do when you're making a UV, like a really quick one, I'm going to use Oh, it's already open. <laughs> uh, UV Master. And work on clone. And then I like to just do attract from ambient occlusion because it's a lazy way. And then you just click on, I mean, so for example, if you don't like that and because the blues where ZBrush is going to try and put seams, if you want to protect certain areas, you can just paint them, oops, paint them red. And then attract is where you want to tell ZBrush to attract seam from, but it just, it really doesn't, it's it can be really finicky, so I like to just do the automated way. So once you click, and for the unwrapping process, it can take a while. So I recommend like closing as many programs as you can. The orange is where the orange is where the seams are going to be. So hopefully you like what it creates, and then you just go copy UVs, and then go over to your mesh, and then you go paste UVs. And if you scroll down all the way to the bottom here, where it says texture map, you'll notice that when you paste the UVs, that it's not grayed out anymore. And then just click on new from polypaint. That pop-up was because I, I've been pasting the wrong UVs in places because I have a, a bunch of different like demos. So you can just ignore it. And then you could auto-group it now, but you don't really need to. You can do that later. So this one is 8 million polys. So we're going to bring that down a little bit. So go to your Decimation Master. Again, if you don't have it open, you just drag that over and then really important you have to keep uvs if you have paint that you've done uh, you can do that as well but i don't so click on pre-process current and make sure you have the percentage that you want it down to select it first so that's telling me what it's going to end up at
All right, so I've got that many polys, and then we're gonna go click on decimate current. You can use these too, but I usually just use the percentage. And actually, I think a lot of people go like 5% or 2%, but that's what I do. Yeah, so now it's, it's quite a bit lower. It's like just under a million. And then, for the ID map, Oh, I have my texture map on. I forgot about that. So everything is one color. And then to change it, you need to have auto groups on. So then you go control. Shift, click, and then click once, and I'm going to go Control W a couple times until I find the color I like. And now the leaves are in one group, and the stem is in one group, so I can color them differently. The stem I'm going to make kind of like a lightish lavender color. Over to switch colors. So as long as the other items aren't visible, it'll work. And then you can go to texture on and then create new from polypaint. So this is your ID map now. And that's what's going to tell Substance Painter that you have two different groups. So the next thing we want to do is export the mesh and export the ID map, which is the texture map. So to do that, you want to go to your, under your Z plugin. Again, it's over here. Go to your multi-map exporter and you just need the texture from Polypaint for this. Uh, my map size, I keep on 2048. Flip V and then create all maps. And mine saved as a TIFF. And then to export the actual mesh, do it as an FBX. So under FBX, export, import, have selected, uh, export in FBX binary format, selected as normals. And then just leave everything, but make sure that the polygroups is on. That's really important so that you can texture these separately. And then smooth normals as 100, and you just go export. And you go file new. And the template is that I use is PBR metallic roughness. Select your FBX file that you just saved. And I keep the res as 2048. You can do whatever. And then click OK. And it might take a minute or two. Mine takes a little while sometimes too, just to load everything in. So make sure you have your texture map that you just saved handy so you can you're going to end up dragging it into here. Oh, 
So I'm going to drag in that map and then change it from undefined to texture and then under import your resources to select project. And then you go import and it will show up here. And that's basically just from literally dragging it from one area of the screen from your computer to another. Um, you can also import resources too, but drag and drop is faster. And under your this UV map area, you can just press F and that'll frame it up. Same with this to like scale or scroll in and out. I'm just doing the middle mouse button. And then if you hold down Alt with the middle mouse, you can move it around. And then Alt with left mouse button pans it around. And Alt right mouse button is to scale it. So here's your material, uh, your base color. It's just all of your different options. If you want to look at your ID map, it's blank because there's no ID map there. So what you want to do is, I'm just going to name this, name whatever you want. You should keep your projects consistent, but this is just sort of a demo, so it doesn't really matter what it, I'm naming it as, but I'll just call that base. So you want to go to your, under your texture set list. And then which one am I? I'm on the main leaves. So then just go bake mesh maps. I just keep everything consistent. So I left it at 2048. You don't need the normals because it's high res from the decimation master. And then you can just go bake that one map. And you can see the stem is still blank. So then I'll go to that next. And this is the polygroup. Like this basically represents your polygroups, your set list. So I'll do the same for that. So it's subtle, but you can see that it's different colors. Now the ID map is not blank. So I'm just going to go back to my main um, main item here. And I don't need to look at the UV map. So I'll just add some a little bit of color to this. Under your layers panel, oh, make sure that when you click on that, it's selected for your ID map. Um, under your layers, this is where you're going to add all of your colors and whatnot. So I always add a fill layer, and then you just go to your properties fill. And then under base color, you can just change it there to whatever you want. I kind of wanted that dusty, greeny color. And I want the stem to be the same color. For the most part, so I'm going to go back to the base and do the same thing. I'm going to add the fill layer back to my properties and then I'm just going to paste that in here and maybe I'll change it up a little go a little bit brighter and so for under the same tab here you have your options to change the look of all the textures and it's it's pretty shiny so if you want to get rid of the shine just go to roughness and so that's super shiny and then And also, if you want like a metallic look, you can just use that slider. So I'm going to go back to my 
leaves and Change the roughness. So you can add layers. I'm going to add one more. Oh, you know, I'll show you the generator. The generator is really cool to give everything like a whole kind of a consistent look. So if you're working with different kind of materials, it can be useful, then you don't have to go through and add it like one, you know, one leaf at a time, which is what I'm going to do, but that's the generator. So I'm just going to add a paint layer. And the color paint I want to use is kind of like this, but maybe a little different. And then with the paint, you can also change the roughness of it. So if I wanted to paint like something really shiny on top, I could. And you also have your brushes here. So the, I really like the dirt ones. And then I think we're going to add some, just a little bit of light, lavender. Uh, you can also change the opacity of the brush. And if you want to right click, then you can just bring it up and change the brush. And this gives you obviously like a preview of what it looks like. You can change the spacing. there's like a peach color and then like a darker green I don't have this plant right in front of me so I'll have to grab it for a reference but right now I'm just kind of going off of what I think looks cool I think I might also do the stem let's turn that off oh right I have to add a 
I'm gonna add a paint layer. You can also just add a paint layer like this too. So this, I'm just holding on to it, and then you can just kind of drag it all over your canvas. Like a minty color. Oh, and then height information. That's the most important, I think. For this anyways because i wanted to add some uh like actual sort of physical looking texture you just go to under your properties paint and you just scroll down go to your height here and if you want to add height then that adds like it's like adding clay almost and you can also take away like subtractive by doing that so if you're doing like concrete that looks really cool. Just gonna bring that opacity down a bit. Another thing you can do is just take your material and drag it right on there. And if you hold down control, it adds a mask here. The skin textures are really cool too. And if you don't hold down control, it just changes like the whole thing. That's pretty much it for this project, and I will see you later.